importance of diet, exercise, and supplements in disease prevention and management. That's what I want to talk about today. You know, I'm the first one to tell you that everyone should have an annual physical examination by their family doctor every year. And that should be completed with all the blood work that's required to get a full screening on, on how your body physiology is working. And it should also include, when it's appropriate, early detection procedures like a PSA test for prostate problems, a colonoscopy after the age of 50, a breast examination, pap smear. These are very valuable early detection procedures. But, you know, in most medical exams, they look for problems that already exist or they're, they're looking for early warning signs like high cholesterol or high blood pressure. And usually the problems that are seen are managed with drugs alone. Uh, medical exams don't really prevent the onset of a disease. And what we're realizing more and more is that it's not bad genes that actually are responsible for most diseases that occur once we're in adult life. It's really more faulty dietary and lifestyle practices as I'm going to illustrate shortly. And during that physical exam with your medical doctor, most MDs don't go, do a very good job of assessing this vital aspect of health management. You know, they don't give you a customized plan for dietary change and the exact exercise program you should be on and other lifestyle modifications to improve your health status so that when you come back next year, you're still going to be in good shape. So let me give you some examples of the importance of diet and lifestyle. The National Cancer Institute tells us that 70 to 90 percent of all cancers are a result of faulty dietary and lifestyle practices, not bad genes. And all deaths that occur each year, 30 percent of them are from cancer. And so what's really happening is that certain mutations are, are occurring in our genes over our lifetime that we're accumulating largely because of faulty dietary and lifestyle patterns that account for cancer showing up at some point down the road. Or we may have a genetic vulnerability to cancer and then we pull the trigger with our lifestyle behaviors. The same is true for heart attack and stroke, which is the leading killer, more than 40% of all deaths each year. Most of the risk factors that, uh, that are, are responsible for heart attack and stroke and other vascular conditions like high cholesterol and, and other things are, are primarily diet and lifestyle related. So for instance, we know from the Framingham Heart Study that 90% of people could keep their cholesterol in the ideal range without drugs just by proper dietary and lifestyle management, although that often gets neglected that 75 percent of people with high blood pressure is in the mild to moderate range, studies show that through proper diet and lifestyle that could be brought into the ideal range. Of course, smoking and uh, high blood sugar and high homocysteine levels, inflammation in the artery wall, lack of fitness, all these things compound the risk for vascular disease and there, much of this is manageable through proper diet and lifestyle measures, but someone has to show you how to do it. The same is true for osteoporosis. One in four women after the age of 50, one in eight men. It's, a, it, it's, it's an epidemic. And, you know, in Canada at least, you know, more women die each year from the complications of osteoporotic fractures from the combined death rate from breast and ovarian cancer. And we know that osteoporosis is almost 100% preventable through diet and lifestyle. And Alzheimer's disease is showing the same complexion. Only 2% of people that get Alzheimer's diseases, there's strong genetic links and we're discovering more and more the dietary and lifestyle behaviors that seem to actually put the person at risk or protect the brain against the development of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. In the case of adult onset diabetes, we know that more than 80 percent of these cases could be prevented or better managed through diet and lifestyle. And other diseases too are affected this way. Arthritic changes are very much affected by diet and lifestyle. The development of cataracts and macular degeneration, that's the leading cause of blindness in people over the age of 55. And even prostate enlargement problems linked largely to diet and lifestyle or could be prevented or better managed with diet and lifestyle. So preventing disease requires the right diet and lifestyle plan. It's the most important aspect from year to year that's gonna help keep you in the optimal range when your doctor does their physical exam. So what's missing from these physical examination, these, the consultation you get from your doctor, what's missing is uh, looking at your nutritional status. Are your dietary patterns putting you on the track towards heart disease and stroke and cancer, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes? Or are you following prudent lifestyle patterns? This needs to be identified. And what supplementation advice are you getting? We now know that supplements can do things that drugs can't do. They can help to counter the body's aging clock so you stay more functional. They can help combat 
or better manage existing diseases, not instead of drugs, but sometimes in combination with drugs, or help to manage recurring problems, like say your uh, recurrent urinary tract infections, as an example. Um, they can help build up your resistance to diseases that run in your family. If you're prone to heart disease or certain cancers or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, sometimes certain supplements are showing up as things you could do to help suppress that from expressing itself in you. And then, of course, drug-nutrient interactions. Seven out of ten people are already taking supplements, but sometimes they're self-medicating with things that could be dangerous based on the drugs they're taking or the health conditions they have. So people are guessing what to do. They need guidance in this area. It's not being provided properly. And what, what about the exercise program that you need to be on? Who's designing that for you according to your needs, getting you into the right range to burn fat and stay cardiovascularly fit? Well, I will tell you that this is where some resources become very valuable. Some medical doctors who are into the wellness movement have written some outstanding books to really help guide you. I would recommend the book by Dr. Dean Ornish called Reversing Heart Disease. Another great book called Anti-Cancer by Dr. David Saverin Schreiber, outstanding book. Another great book by Dr. Philip Lee Miller, medical doctor as well, called The Life Extension Revolution. These are great books and resources to help you understand what you can be doing proactively, addressing diet, exercise, supplementation, other lifestyle modifications. Even the book I wrote, The Machino Optimal Living Program, I'd highly recommend it. Now you can also go online and take a free online nutrition lifestyle anti-aging assessment at a website called naturalhealthtest.com. This assessment will give you a customized program for yourself outlining the nutrition, exercise, and supplementation program that best suits your specific circumstances and needs. The assessment factors in all the things that are necessary, your age, your gender, signs and symptoms of nutrient deficiencies. Are, there, are you taking medications or doing things that are depleting certain nutrients from your body? What are your body shape measurements? What health conditions do you have? What are recurring things that you're facing? What's your activity level? What medications are you taking? Are there certain health conditions that you have that would preclude you from taking certain supplements or making dietary changes? It's all factored in, including how many grams of protein you need, where to get those grams of protein, what your exercise heart rate should be and what doses of certain supplements would make the most sense for you so you're not wasting your money on things that don't really apply to you. So every adult should you know, read books like that, take that online assessment, take the feedback very seriously because the food that you eat, the supplements you take, the exercise that you perform, and your exposure to certain carcinogens in the environment are the most critical things that are going to determine how long you'll have a highly functioning body and mind and remain free from terminal and advancing illnesses. You know, we've never known so much about how to prevent disease as we, knew, as we do today, and yet most people sabotage themselves by having faulty dietary and lifestyle practices that lead to premature illness and premature death. So it's really important that you get feedback, say, from that online assessment, read the books, and defend yourself with the right diet, exercise, supplementation program, other lifestyle modifications. You know, you can't just rely on your annual physical exam from your doctor to get this part of your life in order. So you need to be proactive about it and because it's extremely relevant. Uh, all the things I highlighted in this report, I really think you should take seriously. So good luck with your wellness goals. It's worth the investment. Stay the course, and I wish you tremendous success. Thanks so much for watching.